But what I would plan to talk a little bit from the technical perspective, but probably I skip most of the technical perspective and go to the conclusions, which may serve as a basis for the discussions. So, but my plan was to talk about safe control for learned systems, or can we have, can we control systems in a safe manner? And if so, what are the requirements for that? So let's start with this. So when we want to learn to control systems, um, the systems usually need to explore their environment. And uh, the question is, of course, do we want to let the systems like this industrial robot explore its environment? And under which constraints? In order to prevent accidents happening, either to the system itself, environment, people, or anything else. And our vision usually is something that by having careful models of the systems itself, we can hopefully learn uh, systems uh, that this learning can be done primarily in some kind of simulation model. Uh, or another surrogate, of instead of the real system. So where the amount of calibration in the real world needs to be minimized. So we want to do as much as possible, especially when we talk about learning control, outside the real world and only learn from the real world as little as is needed. So that's one of the, let's say, big ideas here. This, of course, also relates to the problem of data efficiency we already talked about earlier. And uh, in order to be able to uh, deploy the systems such that they, uh, on one side, uh, work in the real world, but still can adapt to their current operation environment. So I now very quickly outline some ideas about how, about one example, how we can do uh, safety work learned control. Uh, you, many, many times uh, the basic idea is that we want to learn as little as possible but sufficiently in order to address the problem. And for example, in the case of learning to control complex systems, often instead of learning the entire controller, we may able to learn only the part of the dynamics of the system that is unknown. So this very much relates to Simon Sarkas' talk, uh, for example, in the morning, where he was talking about that we do have already lots and lots of physical knowledge. We understand approximately how the systems work. There are some unmodeled phenomena, and we need to learn the effect of those phenomena. But, uh, but if we can still use control structures, uh, other uh, methods, that allows us to use them and build, uh, let's say, um, build on the foundation of established methods rather than learning entire systems end to end, where the safety engineering is extremely difficult. So, for example, uh, we have been developing methods where we can optimize safety margins. So, when we have systems that have some learned components, if we can quantify the effect of that uncertainty. If we can understand how certain the system is about, in this example, a simple example about the dynamics of the, uh, of the world or, or the dynamics of the system, we can find optimal margins that guarantee us the safety under that uncertainty that we have. And that means that initially the system can be extremely cautious before it has been calibrated with real data only with simulation, it can be extremely cautious in order uh, before it learns uh, more or gathers more data from the real world, such that we can adapt these margins even online. So that while the system gets more information, it can, let's say, use tighter margins uh, towards uh, better efficiency. So I won't go much deeper um, into the technical details, but the nice thing about these kind of methods is that instead of having to build everything on 
top of a magical black box AI, we are able to uh, build the systems based on, for example, model predictive control by adding their additional safety layers and safety margins, which can be kind of foundation or, or built on the foundation of, or, let's say, principal foundation. So let me then conclude very quickly. Uh, when we have pure data-driven systems, uh, the, their safety is usually extremely difficult to show, as we've seen uh, already in the previous presentation, many reasons for that. In that uh, respect, when we want to uh, uh, build those safe systems, we need to in, insert in the system different kind of biases, either inductive biases in the machine learning. Inductive bias in practice means that we put there some structural human understandable uh, information in the system that constrains what it can learn. And using that kind of constraint, embodying the human understanding of the problem allows us to build then uh, methods where we are able to analyze their behavior, where we can trust their at least about uh, the, or we can at least analyze their safety. These can be uh, hierarchical systems, human understandable backup options like we've seen here. So that there's uh, some backup system that takes over uh, if the system is doing something uncertain, uh, unsafe. And that can be even, the system can be fed back to AI in order to prevent the AI to repeat that problem. We have structured systems such as what I proposed or what I presented very, very briefly, is that we can uh, put together uh, foundational methods like optimal control with learned dynamical models. Or, and in many of those cases, the quantification of the uncertainty of the model is useful and probably in, in my personal opinion uh, it is most likely necessary thing to do. So the systems like Arno commented earlier to one of the questions from the audience is that we have to build systems that are, are aware of the unknown unknowns as well. Systems that know when they are uncertain about their answer so that we can then increase the safety margins we can call the human operator or ask the human teleoperator. We can maybe do emergency stop in the cases where the operation of the system is uh, not reliable. I guess that will conclude my brief talk on this topic and we can move to the final discussion.